I wish you guys could see the view that I get from here because it's honestly like entering a world of the bu of like bugs life or or something. And then you look around and it's like what? what? Hi guys, I'm at the John Innes Centre in Norwich where they do tons of research into plant genetics. And I'm going to meet Robert Sablowski, who is the head of cell and developmental biology. And he's been doing some fascinating fundamental research into cell size and how that can affect the meristem. This is the most exciting how does it grow to date. I hope you enjoy. I'm here today to do some discovery into meristems. Can you can you tell me what a meristem is? <laughs> well, meristems are our life here. So right. meristems are really, really important for how plants grow. Humans, when they are born, they are more or less ready. You just elaborate on the organs. They grow a bit, they become uh, more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. But uh, plants never stop developing. Uh -huh. So they grow towards light or they grow away from wind or towards nutrients. And that is possible because of the meristem. The way I understand it is that a meristem is a cluster of cells that have potential. These cells replenish their own type of cell mm -hmm. and all the time provide new cells which, as you say, go on to become specialized. But to show people what a meristem would look like, yeah. we can use the cauliflower. When you have cauliflower and cheese, you're having meristem with cheese. To be precise, this is not one meristem. This is tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of meristems all bunched together. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is that the cauliflower is a mutant. I've never thought of a cauliflower as a mutant before. It's, it's a very monstrous mutant, actually. <laughs> okay, there you uh, go. What, what's wrong with cauliflower is that, as you said, cells that leave the meristem, they begin to specialize. Mm -hmm. Here, they have a difficulty in doing that. So cells that are leave living from the side of the meristem, mm -hmm. they decide to become another meristem. And that oh, accumulates yeah. into this huge mass of meristem, not knowing what to do. So the cauliflower meristem. meristem is mutant. It just doesn't know how to become a flower. So instead, it just becomes another meristem. Yeah. The problem with using cauliflower in meristem cell research is that it's absolutely massive. So instead, Robert and his team use this plant, which is a weed called Arabidopsis. And it's much easier to work with because it's so versatile and it grows quickly. And most importantly, the meristem is tiny, so tiny it would sit on the top of a piece of hair. And this means it's much easier to be imaged and studied at a later stage. Do I get to wear a coat? You'll need to wear a coat. Yes. Well, this is fantastic news. It's very cool. So this equipment, right. the surgical loop, it allows me to magnify uh, the plant. Because what I need to do is to isolate meristems. If you look down from the tip to the base of the plant, you see a record of time. At the very center is the meristem, and then you have all these spirals of buds growing around it. So what I need to do is to get rid of all of this. Small makes it difficult, but at the same time, later on, makes it easier to do the imaging because you can get the whole meristem into one Because you really are taking away yeah, still, most of it. I'm still a long way from the meristem. Cool. Using the Arabidopsis, Robert and his team are asking why are meristem cells special? And one of their key features is that the meristem cells are small and unified in size, which is quite unlike cells in other areas of the plant. So Robert is asking, does the meristem control the size of these cells? And if it does, why? Can I try your surgical you loop can. on? Of course. Yeah. Oh yeah, I need to film yeah. something. Oh my gosh, my nails. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. You're very good. Am I? Would, I? I would hire you in the lab. It's really satisfying. <gasps> I think I just took off the whole thing. <laughs> that happens. Oh no, have I just taken off the whole the whole top of it? That is tricky. So this is the box where we put that uh, little apex. And this goes in a in a growth room. So we're gonna pop this in here. There'll be like Comfortable temperature, plenty of lights. Have fun in there. How many images will you take over how long? If you're really good at it, they're going to take up to three images. Three, so just three days? Yes, because they suffer when you're imaging the laser beam and all that, it causes some damage. So it's not consecutive days? It'll be it one day? It is normally consecutive, consecutive days. Really? Yeah, yeah. And it has to be that close, uh, the imaging sessions have to be that close to each other, so you can actually catch the same cells dividing. Mm -hmm. If you wait too long, it becomes a mess because it divides many times 
you don't know who came from which cells. Yeah, I think a good way to think about meristems is as a cluster of cells who are all living at home, and these guys all have potential, okay? And as they move further and further away from home, it's time to specialise, it's time to go out and get a job. Maybe they decide it's time to become a petal, or maybe it's time to go and become a leaf. But what Robert has found is that if you affect the size of a meristem cell, it in turn will affect its ability to go out and become successful. Now, if you change the size whilst it's still developing in the meristem, then actually the cell is able to sort itself out. It recognises that it's too large to become anything specific, and it will actually divide itself into smaller, more precise cells that will then go and specialise. However, if you affect the gene later on, when actually it's already moved away from the meristem, at that stage it's no longer able to divide anymore, and it stays large and bulky. It kind of becomes a slight pixelated blurred version of what it's supposed to be so we can see here guys is that this is where you have your normal small cell size and then this is an example of where the meristem cells have been enlarged and because they are just so big they're failing to divide and become small and specialized like they are over here you no longer have that definition of what's going to become a new organ like you have over here so this is a normal arabidopsis flower and in the buds where very early on we made the cells so big not only you have smaller organs which are a bit deformed but very often they're missing so there are consequences right. to the flower if mm. you disrupt the cell size uh, quite early on this is really exciting because previously people just thought that cell size was all about its final job perhaps it's to do with it needing to be large so that it can take in more nutrients or maybe it's got a particular shape and size because it has to provide rigid rigidity but actually what they're finding is that no 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 cell size is all about definition and actually it really affects that final outcome there you go guys that's possibly the most complicated how does it grow we've ever done on this channel but i hope you've enjoyed it you now know what a meristem is and maybe tonight you go and enjoy yourself some meristem and cheese make sure you subscribe and i'll see you on the next video